Well, the house is a house. There's something that it is to be the house. And the fact that this guy made the house is, is accidental. It could have been made by someone else. Even the fact that the building or the house was built by a house builder is not something essential to what it is to be a house. Right? So that's the second type. If it's being an effect, is something additional to its essence. See, so you understand the language there? It's being an effect is part of its essence. What we mean by its essence is what it is, what it's, it makes it what it is. Or its being an effect is something additional, distinct from its essence, not part of what it is. Yeah? So, the cause is only connected with the full actual existence of the effect if it's being an effect is its very essence. I mean, the shadow is fully what it is at that, right? There it is. And because it's in that condition or that relation with the cause of the shadow, once the cause of the shadow is gone, the shadow will be totally gone. Continually depends on it in that way, right? Whereas the house, it's being built by this builder is not essential to what it is. So once the builder builds it and then stops building, the house is still there even though the builder is not building anymore, right? And that's because the house is not something, it's something that has its own essence, distinct from its being an effect of the builder, yeah? Good? Contrast it with the pounding. Here's the house. The house is being built by the builder, and at the same time the builder is pounding, <laughs> yeah? Boom, 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 yeah? The pounding is, what is pounding? Well, the pounding is an effect of the builder hitting something, right? So when he stops, the pounding is gone, right? But the house is still there. Even the marks that he made in whatever way was pounding, yeah? They would still be there because a mark in a brick or whatever, right, is not, yeah? Uh, it has its own essence, right? Uh, aside from the fact that it's an effect, yeah? So if the world, yeah, is related to God in the way that Ibn Sina's argument has it, right? That God is related to the world in as much as it fully exists, and its relation is such that God's creative action is continually necessary for its existence. That, that means the world is like a shadow, right? The, the very essence of what the world is, is it's being an effect, right? Okay, but then it, it's, it's not an act, right? Because it's just there, yeah? All right. But if the world has its own substance, which is the case, right? I mean, Ibn Rush says the world is not like that. The world has its own substance and exists in virtue of its own essence. Then the cause of God is only... God is connected to its potentiality, to its potential existence, right? God's connected to with the fact, with what's not yet, but could be given what is. And he's the one connected with removing, with, with moving things from that state of potentiality into actuality. Around and around eternally, one thing coming from another. So it's a process, it's a work in progress, and it's continual, right? Um, so, now, and that's what he says the world is like. Now, back to this other thing. He says maybe the agent is connected with the pure actuality, the forms of heavens, for they are immaterial beings whose existence consists in their thinking. Right? <laughs> this has to do with the form and matter issue. Right? So, when you have Aristotle's theory that a substance is a unity of form and matter, right? And the matter is what accounts for the potentiality of something. Because the matter is what always could take on a new form and become something new. See what I mean? If I have a clump of clay, and it's, it's potentially a cup. If I say, he made a cup out of clay, I can't make a cup out of nothing. Because nothing is not something. I can make a cup out of clay. That means the cup is somehow existent in the clay, but not actually yet. See? It's potential in the clay. Because of what the clay is, it has the potential to become a cup, so right, I can form it into a cup. But that means it has to take on, right? The clay has to take on this new form. So we have this relation of matter and form. Matter is what accounts for the potentiality, right? 
And form is what accounts for the actuality. It, it's actually a cup now when it takes on this form of the cup. Yeah. And now we have in the world of this form. So they have to be forms, but form is what makes something intelligible. I can understand what it is. I can say it's a cup, it's a tiger, it's a tree, it's a person, right? These are the intelligible features of the thing. If I just have matter, it's just some stuff that could be anything. That's not even something intelligible. And for Aristotle also, that means what? Such thing, matter by itself doesn't exist, right? But the question is about forms, because you know forms come from somewhere, and now we have the idea of God is giving forms. There has to be, you know, uh, some uh, a source for these forms, a cause of this, for matter to be in form, right? Now, the way they in the theory somehow it got to be uh, somehow this guy idea came about, right? That the spheres, because remember they believed that the, the Earth is in the center of the universe and surrounded by ten spheres, right? The sun, the moon, the outermost stars, and seven planets, right? And they rotate, right? And the idea here was that now here on the Earth, where everything is, is material, right? Underneath the moon, the sublunary, they call it, right? Uh, things are going through these changes, material things, potentiality, actuality, this whole process is going on, right? And it's because of the motion of the spheres, which actually creates time, right? And time is what makes, is, is a condition for the possibility of changes, right? It's the measure of change. So these things are, the spheres, the motion of these spheres are causing the motions of things on the earth, right? It's, it's coming from the top down. Okay? So if we trace the causes of the changes on, on the Earth, we will go up through the stars. That's why people believe in astrology, it makes sense then, right? Because if the causes of the things on Earth are ultimately traced back to the stars, then the position of the stars will, right, determine what happens on the Earth. Yeah, that's in the case of the... But these, uh, the question was about these spheres, right? Are they now like other things having matter and form, right? Well, if so, then they have a form. The heavens, right, have a form and matter. That means basically that each heaven has a body and a soul, right? The soul of the heaven is the form of the heaven. The matter of it is its body, or really the unity of it is the heaven, the unity of the form and the matter. Yeah, it's two dimensions. Yeah. Each of these ended up becoming understood as an intellect and identified with an angel, yeah? Because uh, the idea now is that um, the forms of things on earth all descend from these spheres, one through another, right? And if we think of them as intellects, then, right, we would think of them as sort of thinking the thoughts, thinking the ideas which inform the things on earth, yeah? There are humans, again, and that's because the form of human, it, you know, the matter takes on form of human and different individuals. We have many humans. Many of them because of the different matter, but they're all human because they share the same form. Right? Where does this form of human come from? Well, it's an idea, first of all. It's what we think about when we think about a human. We have an intelligible idea of what a human being is. Right? And that idea is what informs matter. So it must be coming from a mind which thinks that thought. You see what I mean? Like a bigger mind. Yeah? Well, it comes down through, that comes from God, right, from where it fills you, yeah, and it comes down through these spheres. So the spheres are like intellects. Now think about it. That's why he says now, the forms of the heavens, where they are immaterial beings whose existence consists in their thinking. Think about your mind, right, so just based on that analogy. Your own mind consists of it, your thinking. If you think of an idea, let me think of some idea, I don't know, a, a thousand-sided house, right? All right, that's an idea, and you can think of it, right? In your mind, you can know that it's possible. And it's a thought. Is there a difference between your thinking it and the thought? Their answer was no, yeah? The thought of the thousand-sided house is your thinking it. That's different from the case of the camera or the computer monitor. When I'm looking at it, there's a difference between my, uh, my thought about it, or at least, you know, my, you know, the experience I have of it, the image that I can concoct of it in my mind, and what's out there. And that's because this has matter. 
right? That makes it distinct from the matter of my mind. Part of the mind, part of the part of my soul, the mind that has matter, which is the part that senses things, right? So there's a chunk of stuff here, there's a chunk of stuff there. It's a computer monitor, and when I actually see it, right, there's a sort of impression of it in this matter. There's two different things. But when I think of a totally abstract idea, right, my thinking and the thought which I'm thinking are the same thing, one thing. Yeah? They're one thing. So that's the case for the these souls of the heavens, or intellects as they're called, right? And getting quite tired now, let's say I have to take a breath. Um, in this case, right, the idea here is that since uh, their thinking is the thought that they're thinking, yeah, um, their existence is purely actual all the time. But there's no potential in it, there's no change, because it's a purely formal existence. It's like all the ideas of all the things on the earth are contained there, right? It's not as if things are changing. Our minds are physical, so when I think a thought, there's a time when I'm not thinking it, and then I think it, and maybe it gets blurry, and I fail to understand it, then it comes back, or I recall it, and I forget it. This change, that has to do with, right, because my mind is not the same as the thoughts, that, right? But here, it's like a perfect mind. All the, it's just, just the container, so to speak, of all the ideas of things that we only sometimes are able to think and sometimes don't. The container of all the ideas of things which gives order to the world and makes the world intelligible, right? The ideas of humans, the ideas of tigers, the ideas of electrons, the ideas of anything that we could actually get an idea of. Because yeah? the whole notion here is if we can know about the world, then the ideas that we have about the world must be actually something about the world. The world must be, in not, it's not just us that's informed by any ideas, the world itself has to be informed by the ideas too. Otherwise, it's not knowledge. It's just us making stuff up, right? So how does the world get informed by the same ideas that we get informed of when we learn about the world? Well, it's because the ideas are from the same source, and that source is the souls of the heavens, right? Which informs the world with those ideas. But the way those ideas are from, or it was in, sort of existing in the souls of the heavens, is not in matter, right? They're thinking the idea is the idea. Yeah, so they're, 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 these these heavens are not having like a uh, like a separate they're, they're not like separate object from the thing that they're thinking. Right? They are the thoughts. Yeah, and then that's why they're not in any sense potentially beings. They're fully actual being, right? So if that's the case, he says, well, Ibn Sina might be right when it comes to those things. Right? God's relation to them, right, is as the agent eternally giving full actual being, right, to this kind of the soul of the outermost heaven, certainly, right? Mm -hmm. The intellect, mm -hmm. which is a kind of a mediator in creation there. You know what I mean? You have like these layers on there. And then sometimes they would call them an angel or something, right? So you could put it that way if you want to make it simple terms, right? Because we're physical beings, we're always going through changes, our existence is always an in-between state. But angels, they're existing, they don't have physical bodies, they don't go through changes, right? They always fully are what they are, so their existence is in a full actual state. And then since that's the case, the relation that God has to them can be like that, but not the rest of the world, yeah? Because the rest of the world has matter. What time is it now? Um, oh my God, it's almost 10 o'clock. Yeah. That took a lot longer than I thought it would. Probably I could have done it in a shorter time.